Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Cherie Brainerd from South Africa. I am so happy to address you today. When I was born 39 years ago, my mother worried whether she would be able to raise me in that, but before she understood that I was perfect in my own way, she realized that although I had changed her life in a way, she did not choose. She was still free to choose her attitude. People like me were seen as a burden on their parents and society. Sometimes our parents are still seen as people who have sinned and who have to be punished. Some people told my mother that if she confessed her sins, I would become like other children. That is why people used to hide the children in the time when I was born, so that society could not judge them. When most of my dreams for 2020 were wiped out by COVID-19, it was easier for me than for many other people because I am used to having setbacks in my life. During lockdown, after all my dreams have been wiped out, I received an invitation to play a part in the soapy on TV, Married to Rugby. We must focus on all the blessings of the day and not compare them with what we have lost. Ladies and gentlemen, I am trying to change general perceptions about people like me. I know people mostly abort their babies when they find out they would be like me. People asked my mother why she didn't abort me. And many told her that luckily we don't live long. Ladies and gentlemen, our life expectancy nowadays is about 70 years. My mother hopes to look after me until we die together one day which means that you might have to become about 90 years old. I wonder who is going to look after who at that stage. And yet, ladies and gentlemen, life and death is not in our hands, but what we do with our lives is a choice we make. Even during lockdown, I try to make every second of my day count. You know, all people die, but not all people really live. I choose to demand more of myself than anyone else expects of me. I accept failure. Everyone felt it something, but I cannot accept not trying or giving up easily. The greatest illusion is that life should be perfect. There were so many schools which were locked for me when I wanted to attend a mainstream school years ago. They said I would give these schools a bad name. My IQ was right, but my face wrong. When I was admitted into a mainstream school, at long last, I was admitted into a mainstream school. At long last, no amendments were made for me. I was assessed and handled exactly the same way as the other learners. Regardless of that, my appearance still gave children a chance to mock me because I looked different from them. When they bullied me, I answered, would you like to have my extra chromosome? Somehow things went out. Because in my last year in school, the children chose me as class captain. I tried not to be mean to the police, and later I made friends who are still special to me. But even today, I am still hurt by people who are nasty to people who are perceived as being different. You know, in reality, we are all different. That is what makes us unique. 
we must try to treat all people the way we want to be treated. Never speak down to any person. Self-confidence is important, but we should never think that we are better than anyone else. I have my own shortcomings and I have to look on them every day. I am an introvert and I do get irritated and I can be stubborn, but that makes me human. People ask me whether I am less or more affected than other people with Down syndrome. And I tell them that there is no competition be between us. I compete with myself, not with other people. Comparing yourself is the biggest waste of time. All people have obstacles to overcome from time to time. I am so lucky that my problem has a name. I would have liked to be as bright as many other people. But I have learned to make the best of who I am. Can you say the same? I have been very fortunate to attend a mainstream school. This enabled me to be the first person with Down syndrome to pass a mainstream grade 10 curriculum in South Africa. After leaving school, I attended a national technical college and there I passed my grade 12 examinations. I was the first and only person with Down syndrome to be accepted there. The classes were presented in English, which I could hardly understand at that stage. And we wrote three hour papers, which were set and marked externally. I never had someone in class to help me. I passed the N6 course, the highest qualification at the college, and was awarded an education diploma. But dear ladies and gentlemen, you must realize that I had to work much harder than the other students. It was not always easy to pass my subjects. I failed some of my subjects. Again, and sometimes again, and again. But I never gave up. I only draw the order. I believe you are only a failure when you give up trying. I identify with the words of Nelson Mandela. You are the master of your fight and the captain of your destiny. This attitude helped me to make the best of myself just the way I am. You cannot always change your circumstances, but you can change the way you look at them. You cannot change the direction of the wind, but you can adjust your sails to reach your destination. My glass is neither half full nor half empty. My glass is always full of opportunities to learn. When I was small, I was perceived as destined to fail in life. But ladies and gentlemen, if you think your achievements will be limited because of a disability or a disadvantage, it is sometimes nothing more than an excuse. Helen Keller was born blind and deaf, and still she passed a university training with great success. And she made a great impact on, and she made a great impact on the world. I believe that most failures come from people who make excuses for themselves. No person with a disadvantage should be excluded from opportunities to develop. We must all go to reach our true potential. I do so every day, and I try to inspire others to do the same. People try to fit me into their boxes. I make my own box, and I stop trying to please everyone. 
I am me. And I determine what I do of my challenges. And only I can decide to change them into opportunities. I have written a book about my life, which was launched in my own language, Afrikaans, and also in English. In my book, I highlighted the fact that parents should never give up hope. With support and motivation, your child will be able to do many things. Don't focus on what they cannot do, but on what they can do, be strict and help the child fit into society. I am so happy to work as an assistant teacher at a school for learners with intellectual disabilities for the last 11 years. Education was my field of study. I helped the teacher with lessons and to stimulate the learners. The children accept me as teacher, and they often come to me with their problems because they can relate to me. I cannot have my own children. So the children in my school fill a huge empty space in my life. I can honestly not believe all the wonderful things I have been blessed with. Apart from being chosen as South Africa's Woman of the Year, in the category Youth Movers. I have had the opportunity to address conferences of the United Nations in New York and in Geneva, Switzerland. During those speeches, I advocated for the rights of disadvantaged people and people with intellectual disabilities all over the world. I feel so blessed that the Lord can use me just the way I am. My extra chromosome has given me wonderful opportunities, except for meeting Oprah. I have also been asked to address international conferences in India, Scotland, Jerusalem, Wales, Switzerland, Rome, Berlin, and Brighton outside London. It was also awesome to address a conference of the Royal Society of Medicine and students of the King's College in London. I also had the opportunity to address the universities of Oxford, Canterbury, and Cambridge in England. In New Zealand, I was interviewed on a national television program. They invited me after I had addressed community and school functions in New Zealand, my mother was so stressed because it was a diet broadcast. And you know, English is my second language. I am happy to be part of research done by the researchers of the London Project in London to help find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Researchers believe the key to a cure for Alzheimer's may be in the cells of people with Down syndrome. Doctors also did a lumbar punch on me. I did it because I would like to be able to help all people in future to detect Alzheimer's early enough to treat it. When my father died about 20 years ago, I thought that I would never be happy again. We slipped and fell off a waterfall. They only found his body about a month later. I could never say goodbye to him. And, but I decided to accept what I cannot change in life. No matter how rough our life is, don't ever give up. If you stand up one more time, then you fall down, you're a winner. Remember, the past cannot be changed, but the future is still in our hands. Sure, my heart was broken. How can your heart not break when you lose a loved one? 
but broken heart, I will give us strength and understanding and compassion. I pray for guidance every day. And after my father died, I also pray for the strength to carry on with my life. I try so hard to focus on the future and to let go of the sad things in my past. Sometimes it is a decision you must make. When my family is with me, I can only hold out my hand and someone will always help me. May our dear father provide you with the people and statues you need when you have to hold out your hand. Or even better, may there be times that it will be your hand that will help people over the hurdles of life. Remember, you cannot help everybody, but everybody can help somebody. Life has no guarantees. If you want guarantees, buy yourself a kettle. The truth is, life is happiness and sadness. But we must all be proud of who we are. It depends on us, on what we do with our lives. How we respond to loss and pain is a choice. But somehow, we must all move on. Don't even waste precious time. Thomas Edison, the man who invented the light bulb, had to leave school at a young age. His mother told him that it was because he was a genius and far too broad for school. Years later, he became one of the greatest inventors of the century. One day, he came across the letter of his old teacher. The letter read, Your son is intellectually disabled. We cannot teach him at school. He is expelled. He wrote in his diary that night, Thomas Edison was an intellectually disabled child who had someone who turned him into a genius. By believing in him, often a positive word can change a person's destiny. I believe our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try. Just one more time. In my life, the elevator to success has been out of order and I had to use the stairs. I had to take one step at a time. There are no shortcuts to any place we're going to. Without shortcuts and with a lot of hard work, everything worked out to me in the end. So, if it hasn't worked out for you yet, just keep on trying. Remember to believe in yourself if you think you can't. You can't. If you shoot for the stars, you may reach the three tops. Always set your aims as high as possible. We have all but this one precious life. What are we going to do with it? Today, a person with Down syndrome challenges you to be the best you can be. I conclude with the following written poem by Samantha Higgins. Please. Don't judge me by my face, by my religion, or my race. Please don't laugh at what I wear, how I look, or do my hair. Please look a little deeper, way down deep inside, behind my smile. I softly cry. Please look a little deeper, 
maybe you will see what's inside of me is what's inside of you. Thank you.